Hey guys, Jonas here. Now, basically, if you didn't see a while back, I made a video on, I think, what the worst weapons in each campaign. And this time, I'm going to be doing it. But this time, I'm going to be talking about what I think are the, the most annoying weapons each campaign. So these are the most annoying ones to come up against in each campaign. So, so they could be overpowered... They could be very early unlocks that generally are, are more powerful than what they give. Or they can just be stuff which just are frustrating to deal with. Now, I'm actually going to make two exceptions to this rule. The first thing is, I'm not going to be saying just rifle grenades all the time. I'm only going to lim limit it to, one, to only one faction having rifle grenades. <clears throat> so only one faction is going to have the rifle grenades. With the other, the other factions having other weapons. I'm also not going to be including stuff like AP mines. Because let's face it. AP mines are just annoying to deal with in general. So <clears throat> yeah with that being said. Let's move on to. Let's start with what I think is the weak. The faction with the weakest one. You know the. Um, not I wouldn't say the weakest. It's their, their most annoying weapon is definitely the least annoying out of the 10 here. And we'll start with that faction. Coming in at number 10 is actually Tunisia Axis's one. Now, Tunisia Axis actually has one of the most balanced loadouts in the game. In fact, it was very difficult for me to pick what I thought was the most annoying weapon. In fact, I was actually tempted of using the cop-out of the Shishbeka here. Because, you know, the whole rule that I made where it's like, oh, only one faction can have the annoying AT and um, the annoying grenade launchers. I was tempted of having this as Tunisia Axis. However, then I remembered that the Breton one exists. And honestly, I now that I was thinking of it, I thought, yeah, the Breton one would probably be their most annoying weapon. Now, the reason it's so annoying to go up against is because it just outclasses anything at its level. Now, pull it bluntly, the Breton one is a... Is about as good as these, you know, late game SMGs. It's about as good as the Beretta Model 30, 38. However, it's unlocked at level 8. And you could see that this thing just does... It's really good, it looks good, and it outclasses what the Allies have at the time. And that is why it's coming in as the most annoying weapon for Tunisia Axis. They just get um, a very good SMG almost immediately where the Allies don't really get an SMG to match this until their next, until the Thompson, which is level 14. Put it bluntly, you can use the Beretta M1 until, for the entire game, okay? It's, it's an SMG that you can use from level 8 till level the ma till max level, which is why it's coming in as the most annoying weapon. Anyway, let's move on to the ninth most annoying weapon. <laughs> coming in at number nine is Actis Moscow, which is got coming, in, which I think has the ninth most annoying weapon. Now, again, it doesn't really have many annoying weapons. The MG34 is counterable. <clears throat> Something like the, you know, obviously the Kurali is counterable. And even some stuff like the ZH-29 is counterable. So most of the stuff, you know, that they have is countered. And I would argue that the Soviets get better equipment for the most part. What the Soviets don't get an answer for, however, is the Sniper MKB. Essentially, this is the... The Sniper MKB is an assault rifle. And in this game, assault rifles are just god tier. Now the MKB sniper is not the best, um, is definitely not the best, and it's not even the best sniper in the game. However, there is one thing that this thing does really well, and that is the fact that it's in Moscow. If this thing was in, say, Normandy, it wouldn't be as well, it wouldn't be as good as it is. In fact, I would say that the STG-44 suffers from the same problem. However, it's still... I mean, it's still really good for, and I would definitely say it is the most overpowered weapon. It's one of the most overpowered weapons in Moscow, and it's one of their best, if not the best weapon for the Axis in Moscow. 
which is why it's coming in at the ninth most annoying weapon. The reason it's not this high is because it's only limited to snipers and really, you know, the, the Soviets also get a decent alternative as well. And snipers in general aren't that good and you don't really see them deployed much. Anyways, let's move on to number eight. Coming in at number eight, we've got everyone's favourite campaign, Stalingrad. And definitely the most played portion of Stalingrad, the Allies. Yeah, the Allies... Now, I know what everyone's thinking. It's going to be the PPSH. Or it's going to be something like the, P you know, the PPSH or the AVT. But it's not going to be either of them. Now, the PPSH, yes, in most campaigns, this thing is overpowered. However, in Stalingrad, it isn't because, well, the Axis get their own version of the PPSH, which is why the Axis is one is not going to include the 717. So you're not expect, so don't expect to see the 717 or the PPSH for the for Stalingrad on this list. No, I'm going to have to use my the the cop out and go with the Mosin grenade launcher now. The only reason was, I couldn't find anything. Like, I was actually thinking of putting the Winchester here over the Mosin. But then I was like, nah, I'm going to be using... But then I decided, nah, I'm just going to use the cop out and go with the Mosin. Now, essentially, it's a grenade launcher. And as we all know, grenade launchers are the worst and most annoying things in the game. I generally hate going up against grenade launchers... I rarely use them as is, <clears throat> but, yeah, grenade launcher, it's, you know, it's a grenade launcher, it's kind of annoying to deal with, and, yeah, it's why it's coming in at number 8. Also, it's cheap, like, it's a cheap kill. There's a reason why I call it the free kill gun. Anyways, let's move on to number 7. Coming in at number 7 is Berlin. Now, this is going to be the Axis Berlin, and they've got a few decent weapons here and there, like the M the MP43, they've also got the MG34, the drum, which is really good, and of course, the Sniper STG. However, I'm going to have to go with it, it's the FG. I've called this thing the most overpowered weapon in the game, and there's a good reason for this. I'm going to highlight the FG2, because the 2 is much better than the FG1. And I know this thing has received a nerf recently, but it, these things still are overpowered, okay? They are still overpowered, even with their nerfs. Like, I still get multiple kill streaks with these things. Yeah, they're, they're, they're annoying to deal with. They're overpowered. They do a lot of damage. They're basically an LMG, but you you assign them with a um, but they're assigned as a rifle. Easy contender for the most annoying weapon. In Berlin for the Axis. Now you might be thinking, why is it so low though? Why is it only at number seven? Well, the thing is that even the FG has a counter, and the Soviets have a good counter to have a few good counters to it. They have the A. They got the AVT and the AVS. I would say the AVS is actually better than the FG forty two. So. Having, you know, some legitimate counters to it is why it's coming in at number 7. Instead of something like, say, you know, instead of coming in around, you know, the, uh, around the top half. Because as annoying as they are, you can at least somewhat counter them. Anyways, let's move on to number 6. We're hopping back to Stalingrad for number 6 and... As I've already mentioned, I'm not including the 717, so that means it leads down to one thing. The MKB. Yeah, you knew the MKB was going to make its appearance on this list. Essentially, it's a assault rifle in a campaign that doesn't need assault rifles. Now, the only reason it's not... It's only at number 6 is, again, the Soviets have some good counters to it, like the PPSH and... The PPSH. So the, the Soviets have a counter to this. However, I I don't really see this thing being a you know I, I it's powerful, but it's not as powerful as some other weapons, which is why it's coming in at number six. 
Anyway, let's move on to number five. Coming in at number five is the Allies Normandy version weapon. Now, the Normandy Allies have a lot of powerful weapons. The Thompsons, obviously. And I've already excluded out the grenade launchers, but they are pretty good contenders. So is the M2 Carbine and the BIRA2. However, you knew it was coming. It's the 1919 A6. Without question, the most powerful LMG in the game. And probably one of the most powerful weapons in the game. The, the main problem with this thing, it's got no recoil. This thing just has no recoil. It has a low rate of fire. And... You combine the two thing, those two things, you basically have the ultimate line holding LMG. Like you can run around with this thing, you can run and gun with this thing, and you can hold a building with this thing. the The thing is, right? The Allies had couldn't really do any of this with their other LMGs. The Bren was a really good line holder, but it wasn't good in you know running around. The BARs were great for running around, but they weren't as good as a line holder with something like the Bren. But the 1919A6 takes both of these. Now, the, now you might be saying, oh, but the Axes get three, you know, LMGs of similar quality. The MG34, the MG42, the MG34, the drum. And you've said that these two are 10 out of 10 weapons, so why are you singling out the 1919A6? While I am doing that, the thing is that the the MG34 and the 42, both versions of the 34 and the 42, they, they're only really good for line holding. Yeah, you can run and gun with these things, but they're not as effective as something like the 1919-86, where, with, because with the 1919-86, its fire rate really plays in its favour, because you can just keep, you can hold down the trigger for what feels like an eternity, and you can just walk through a house holding down the trigger... And you'll probably only have half your belt, half the belt gone by that time. Whereas if you try that with an MG34 or 42, you're going to reload before you've even cleared half the house. And that is why it's coming in as the most annoying weapon for the Allies in, um, in Normandy. They, and the fifth most overall. Now the only reason it's not any higher, it, even though it's very versatile as an LMG... I just think that the problem with it is it's got the LMG weaknesses and you can make an argument that the, you know, that the MG34 and 42 can actually do it. You know, it's still got to deal with the MG34 and the 42 as alternative, you know, the, the Axis still have them, but it's still incredibly powerful. Anyways, let's move on to number four. Coming in at number four, we have the faction that has everything, Perlin Soviets. Uh, it, it could not escape. It could not escape this list. It's the PPSH. Let's just say it. The PPSH, everyone knows what it is. It's a fast-firing SMG which can do everything. Basically, it's got a huge round, a good rate of fire, good damage, and... It's a PPSH. You can't go wrong with this thing. It's one of the most iconic weapons of World War II. And, yeah, you cannot go wrong with a PPSH. The only reason... Now, you might be saying, but, you know, you've put this weapon, you know, at, like, number... At number um, four. Why is that? Well, the reason I put this is because the PPSH in Berlin is really good because... Because it's in Berlin. The maps in Berlin are unbelievably tight quarters. Which is one of the main reasons the PPSH does so well in those tight quarters. You you basically you jump into a house and you can just spray and pray. Now you might be saying, but you can but you just said about the the MG34, the 42, you know, they can't do that. But the thing is the PPSH doesn't have the LMG weaknesses of high recoil and, critically, hampered manoeuvrability. So, it doesn't have those debuffs, which is why it's much better with the job, obviously, because it's a submachine gun, not a light machine gun. That being said, though, it still wasn't enough to crack the top three, because even though 
it's over par. Even though, you know, it's a 71 mag SMG in probably the tightest campaign, it does have some drawbacks. In, in maps like Silo or Weiberg or Railway Bridge or any of the maps, you know, or even some maps like, um, which have open spaces, this thing doesn't do as well as it does on something like, say, Kroll or something like, you know, when you're in, like, the Kroll Opera House or when you're in something like, you know, the Stra you know, you're engaging through the Strazas and stuff like that. Or in, um... Ministry Garden when you're jumping into the US Embassy and stuff like that. Which is why it's coming in at num which is why it's coming in at number four. Anyways, let's move on to number three. Coming in at number three is Normandy Axis. Now Normandy Axis Again, they've got quite a lot of stuff. You, I've already mentioned the 34, and I could have gone with the FG-42 here, but nah. I'm not going to go with that. I'm going with the weapon that the Allies have really no answer for, the MP-43. Now, the M I've already talked about two other assault rifles, so to put it into perspective, the, the only difference between those two is that they at least had somewhat counters. The scoped one in Moscow had the AVS. The... The one in um, the one in Stalingrad had Stalingrad. <laughs> in all seriousness, it had the PPS, the PPSH, as well as the counter it. The MP43 does not have a counter, really. Which this is where we get it. We're getting to weapons that have absolutely no counter now, and the MP43 has an almost no counter to it. And they would be like. What about the M2 Carbine? Yeah, the M2 Carbine, but has is good. But this thing just beats it at beats this beats it at mid and long range, and it's pretty good at close range. What about your favourite weapon, the Thompson? Yeah, but the top the Thompson excels in close range and is good at medium range. But this thing excels in medium range and close range. What about the Allies version, the 1996? Well, that's only locked to one class, whereas this, yes, it's locked to one class as well, but you don't have the maneuverability penalties like the PPSH in the early one, like the PPSH point earlier. Put it bluntly, this thing just is a monster, and this thing has even been, air quote, nerfed, and it's still unbelievably powerful. I just pull it. You put this at, you know, max level, which I always do. I have, I have like five max. I think I've got every soldier who can have it with a maxed out version of this. Yeah, you, 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 you don't really get my, my. It is a fantastic weapon, which is why it's coming in undoubtedly at number three. But it just missed it. it Really, number three to number one could be thrown in any order. So, I just put it this one at number three because it's probably the easier out the three to counter for the Allies. Anyways, let's move on to number two. Coming in at number two, we have the Soviets in Moscow. Now, I've already excluded the PPSH, so I can't use that. So, and I'm not going to be using either the PPD or even this PPD, which is still a good contender. So, what am I going to use? Why? The AVS. The weapon I said was more powerful than the FG. Easily, easily comes in as the most overpowered weapon for Moscow Soviets. Now, the reason it's so powerful is, again, no counter. This thing hard counters everything in the campaign it has great damage it has a good fire rate it doesn't have the magazine size but and it has only has two rounds in reserve but who cares you can, engineers exist and critically this thing also has a bayonet so you have a bayonet you have a good rate of fire usability in pretty much every situation a pretty decent scope and you put decent, decent sights, and the fact that this thing, you know, has really no counter. And I, like, the only thing that could come close to countering this is the um, 
it's a ZH-29, and even then, the ZH is a is a semi-auto rifle, whereas the, whereas the AVS is a select fire weapon. Like this thing I said count is more powerful than the FG, and it's more overpowered in this campaign than the FG. In fact, the only reason I would say that the, in fact, I remember I made a video back in the day saying that this thing, I think I said this was either the second most overpowered weapon in the game, or the most overpowered. And I still stand by this. This thing just is unbelievably good. Which is why it's coming in as the most as, as the most annoying weapon. Because it's just annoying to deal with. It's annoying to have have bloody some guy who's been playing... You, you're trying to play um, Moscow Axis and then suddenly you run into a death stack with a guy rocking this AVS and you've got nothing to deal with it. Unless, of course, that person is bad, and in which case you can kill those things with bolt actions, but that's a skill issue, not a weapon issue. Anyways, the only reason it came in, it's coming in at number two, is because, really, there's just no real counter to it, but it generally has, it's, it's not as questionably uncountable as number one. Anyway, he's talking about that, let's move on to number one. Coming in at number one is the faction that has it all again. Another faction that has it all, ironically, Tunisia. And Tunisia allies. I I don't even need to say anymore. I just have to I just have to point it out. Drum Mag Thompson. The Thompson already was an overpowered weapon and was generally one of the most powerful weapons in the game. The only advantage that the Axis had was capacity magazines for their weapons, like the Beretta M1, M3842, and of course the M38. Both of all three of them had the high capacity to deal with the Thompson. To deal even with the 28, for, even with the 2128 Thompson, they could, you know, you had they had the capacity where the Thompsons had the, the raw damage. But now, the Allies have the advantage of not only just the raw damage, but they also have the capacity. The Drum Bag Thompson is arguably the most powerful, it's probably the most powerful SMG in the game. Like, I remember, like, Tanata, actually, one of my buddies, Tanata, he threw a few down in, in a match where I picked a few up, up from him. And these things, oh... Dear God, they are powerful. They are undoubtedly the most powerful weapons. I, I would say they're the most annoying weapons to come up against in the game. And it's one of the reasons why Tanitia Axis is so bad, a so low populated, is because people just don't want to go up against someone who's rocking squads full of these because the Thompsons are bad enough. The, you know, the M1A1 Thompson's bad enough, so now give that a an, an actual sight that actually looks pretty good, and give it more, and give that person more ammo than what you've actually got, and you, you have the M1, the M1928A1 Thompson. Anyways... I'm pretty sure we all knew that this was going to come in number one. <laughs> I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Leave your thoughts in the comments. What you, you know, Tell me what you guys think of this uh, list. What do you guys think is the most annoying weapon in the game? It's annoying slash overpowered. Uh, join the Discord if you want to see. You know, Obviously, I've got a few um, suggestions which a few viewers have actually thrown in. So I'll be responding to those soon. And I'll see you guys in the next video.